What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Sam's Report. It is July 27th. My birthday is next week, and um, I'm getting older, which is typically how things work. But uh, I hope you guys had a good week. It's been um, a little interesting on this side. Uh, a lot of things going on, sort of, kind of, but not really, but absolutely, as always. Um, one thing I don't know I, I, I'm excited about is I ordered a new keyboard, the Cooler Master MK750. Uh, it's just time, uh, it's just time I needed a new keyboard and I do a lot of writing. And so that bad boy should be here on Saturday. Looking forward to that. Got the, uh, the cherry blue MX switches, which I am, uh, yeah, quite excited about. So we will, we will see. I'll have more about that, I guess, whenever it arrives and, um, I get to use it for a little bit. But, um, you know, let's just dive in this week. On Monday, I posted up a thing about Xbox Scarlet. I will have a little bit more about here later in the podcast, probably about five, ten minutes or so, if that's what you're looking for. And, um, yeah, so you can go check that video out. It's on the channel, as always. And uh, it just kind of dives into what I'm hearing about Scarlet and the Scarlet Cloud service, which is the streaming platform from Microsoft coming with the next gen hopefully arriving in 2020, at least that is their current expectation. But before we get into that, Microsoft is raising the prices on Windows um, and Office. Specifically on Office 2019, it's gonna cost you about 10% more for on-premises users. And if you are in that same sort of arena, you should be checking out what they're doing with Windows 7 and Windows 10 because Microsoft says, hey, we need more revenue. Easiest way to do that is to raise prices and it's a new fiscal year, which means that they are turning that coin a little bit harder um, and, you know, trying to make sure that next year is a better year financially. So we will see how this plays out for Microsoft. A lot of people are just kind of locked into Windows. It's not like you have a lot of alternatives. Um, I would expect that they are going to continue to offer discounts for volume licensing users. And if you're a big enterprise, it's going to affect you some, um, but probably not as much as on paper because there's always those behind the curtain deals that are taking place. Uh, Other things happening, if you're a Surface Laptop or Surface Pro 4 user, You've got updates. Go get them. They're worth it. And uh, on the Xbox side of life, No Man's Sky finally arriving. Although here's the annoying thing about No Man's Sky. They want, I believe, 50 bucks for it, where if you're on the PlayStation platform, which it has been out for a while, uh, it is only $20. So they are um, uh, trying to trying to cap in, capitalize on the Xbox users. But uh, No Man's Sky is out with a big, massive new update. I'll be curious how people think. This one has actually piqued my interest a little bit. I don't think it'll get me away from PUBG too much. But uh, I'm curious to see what people think of this one, because this seems much more like a casual game as opposed to PUBG, which is more, uh, well, very active and dynamic and and can be a little stressful, fun, a fun stress. But uh, yeah, it seems like a much more casual game. I'm actually a little bit curious about it. Uh, On the Windows side of life, though, Microsoft pushed out a new build and they're going to try to fix Windows updates again. And so I I say again, because in some of the previous versions of Windows, you've been able to schedule when things are supposed to install. But there's always been a problem. And that problem is when it comes to restarting. And this has happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you where you're just going along and something's just not right on your machine or whatever. And you want to restart and you click on start. You hit the little power button. It says update and restart, just not restart or just not updated. It's always that option. And you know, you're going to you roll your eyes and it's going to take you forever because you know how long updates can take. And so they're using this new predictive modeling that is going to help you basically not have to deal with that. I'll, I'll be curious to see. This is coming with Redstone 5, which should ship here in the next eight weeks or so, roughly. Roughly, you know, don't hold me to that, but that's about the right timeline. Uh, that way you don't have to re start waiting for these things. Basically, it, it's a real simple idea. They look at your usage and they say, hey, Brad's real active during these hours. Let's not force the install during that hours. Thanks, guys. It only took us 30 years to get to there, but here we are. And uh, it should hopefully remove that frustration. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because this has definitely impacted me a lot. And uh, hopefully this will make it better. So I guess good job, guys. Good job. Uh, Outlook.com is also getting a new dark mode. Well, I shouldn't say getting a new dark mode. Is getting uh, The dark mode is coming out of beta. So if you are, if you're one of those users and been waiting for dark mode, Microsoft's been doing, uh, kind of going all in on this dark mode stuff and, um, we're getting more and more themes and, and updates across the UI. And eventually I'm sure there'll be auto dark mode, but I don't think that's quite coming yet. And so, uh, that's kind of what's been happening in the Microsoft world. There's a lot of other things going on. Uh, Slack, Uh, is acquiring some like hip chat and other things because there's too many messaging services and so they're condensing a little bit it's an interesting little story there uh facebook uh stock is dropping i don't really care too much about facebook anymore 
But Facebook also bought another messaging platform because it's trying to bolster up its Slack services or Slack competitors slash Microsoft Teams competitor for people that use Facebook at work. Um, I don't really actually know anybody that does, but that is an option. And yada, yada, yada going on. Uh, I'm curious to see what's coming here with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. I, I that, that has probably been the most tempting phone series. Uh, the Galaxy phone line from Samsung is always great, but the Note series has always been tempting to me. And if I were to ever switch away from iOS, uh, it, it would probably be to that device because I love that it has a built-in stylus. And so here's to hoping that that, uh, that comes out. Uh, we got Surface Go. Is that launching next week? I believe it's coming up here very soon. Microsoft is in a full-fledged marketing push. You can find those advertisements everywhere now. And uh, I expect a media blitz here in the near future. So, uh, all right, let's talk about the Scarlet stuff. Not, not a whole lot new. Again, this is kind of sequ sequential things, right? We're learning small little bits. And so I, I'm hearing that the... Uh, so the, the cloud component, right? The little, the, the cheaper console is gonna have its own custom silicon. Microsoft, Microsoft likes to build chips now. This is not the first time. And so Microsoft is building custom silicon for this cloud streaming console. They are doing it for um, the HoloLens. And so, yeah, Microsoft is a chip builder. They like doing this stuff. And so be on the lookout for that. And I think this is going to be one of their selling points. I think this custom silicon is going to be how Microsoft markets that they've, hey, they, they've beaten the latency dragon uh, to death by, by using this custom chip. And so I think this is going to be a big selling point for them. So, um, yeah. So, and then the, the question that comes up time and time and time and time again, is says, what about streaming to non uh, Scarlet cloud devices. So I'm hearing that, yes, that is part of the plan. It, that, that shouldn't come as any surprise, uh, but it may not be at launch. Again, this, guys, someone's going to dig this up on the day at launch. you be like, look, Brad, but it is launching. I, like, as of right now, I don't think it's going to launch with the console. I think they're going to start with their own custom isolated solution. Makes a lot of sense, right? It's a new platform. It's a new way of delivering games. Let's limit the hardware scenario so that they have more control over the experience. And once they become comfortable that that's it, then they can move it to other platforms. So I don't know necessarily think it will launch right away, but I absolutely believe it is in the pipeline because it makes sense. If you have a MacBook and you want to play Xbox games, that would be great for Microsoft because then you could buy Xbox games and Microsoft could make a royalty as they do with every game sold. And then you can play for Xbox Live, which Microsoft makes money from. Or you could play, buy a Game Pass, which Microsoft makes money from, money from, from a streaming service. The, the, the logic behind this is completely sound. And so it will eventually come there, but I don't know if it's going to be at launch. Then the other thing that keeps coming up is saying, everyone's saying, hey, hey, you know what? Sony can get into this. Sony can do this. And absolutely they can. They could bankroll all this and build up their data centers. But everyone th keeps thinking, you know what? Sony's going to go to Amazon. Amazon will be their friend and they will help them deliver that service. So that's an interesting idea. But here's here's the, the thing that I don't think that makes sense. If Sony goes to Amazon and Amazon figures out how to build out a low latency game streaming service, why does Amazon need Sony? Think about that. Amazon could get into the gaming business and you, if you looked at their revenue uh, this last quarter, I, I should have dug up these numbers, but AWS was the margin leader for Amazon. Most of it, what they're doing is not, um, <laughs> is not, is not making a lot of money. I mean, it, it's very, if, when you buy something from Amazon, like, like the keyboard that I just did, it's a very low margin. AWS is a very high margin. Streaming game services are very high margin. I can't, I can't see Sony going to Amazon because then Amazon would be like, screw you, we don't need you. We're just going to build our own platform and uh, stream the games and then there's a third competitor. I could actually see Amazon getting into this market if they can build out what Microsoft just did. It fits right into their wheelhouse of streaming platform and services, and I think that could be a massive threat to Sony. So, um, you, you got to be careful when you say, My, go play with Amazon because Amazon has the ability to just steamroll everybody and anything at this point in its, uh, <laughs> in its life cycle or in its ability. I mean, they've got, they've got cash, they've got technology. They just need ideas and execute. So, all right, let's dive into the questions here. Uh, Mr. PKI says, what changes can we expect to see in Redstone five of windows 10 since the focus is now all about Azure cloud? Uh, I don't know if I would agree that it's all about Azure cloud, but I mean, it's definitely a lot of Azure. 
So we're starting to see a lot more fluent. Fluent is becoming more consistent across the UI. We're starting to see more dark themes. Uh, we have this new update mechanism, but it, this update is not a large one by any means, which is a little bit surprising, but actually now that I say that out loud, not really. Um, after Microsoft dropped the ball in the fall and, and released the spring update a month late, yes, it was a month late, um, they got reamed by management and manage and this time around they're making absolutely sure that they are not going to miss this deadline which is why we are we don't see major updates which is why we're already seeing that they've split the branches which is why microsoft is is just about done with this release and so i wouldn't surprise me if we actually see this thing early we probably got another bug bash or two coming down the pipeline before microsoft is ready to ship this thing but this is by no means a substantial update and so there's not, it's just a lot of underhood stuff, which I'm okay with. Make it, fix it, make it better. For example, the copy paste bug, Microsoft finally fixed that. They fixed the start uh, issue where you click on the start button and it no longer works. So not a whole lot here on the cover other than Fluent, but you're right, it is more, <laughs> this isn't a major release. I think it's the best way to describe it. Uh, Adam Corbelly writes, he says, Facebook is often spoken about us being on par or just beneath Microsoft, Apple, and Google, and Amazon. I just don't buy that despite the stock price and market cap. Many of my friends have started to move away from the service, and I can't see younger people jumping onto the platform. Could Facebook become the first major tech company to go bust in a dramatic way? There's a lot to unpack there. Um, Technology-wise, Facebook is very interesting because they've built out a social network at scale, which is not easy to do. And they've built out dynamic algorithms. You love them or hate them. They've got them. Um, they've got a massive uh, advertising pool to draw from, from Facebook and Instagram and all their other services. Um, I, I don't honestly ever see, well, I shouldn't say ever. I, I don't see Facebook going bust like, like a dot com bust. Um, I do think that there is value in Facebook. I personally very rarely use it. Uh, mostly just to share pictures with my parents and uh, other close family. But I don't use it like Twitter does, like I use Twitter or anything like that. Um, I, I do believe there is a peak, right? Facebook CFO uh, has been shouting for, I think, eight quarters saying, hey, this growth is not sustainable. This growth is not sustainable. This growth is not sustainable. And then they finally had a, a quarter where growth wasn't sustainable. And the market freaked out because they just assumed that Facebook would eat the world. And granted, they're doing like 1.5 billion monthly active users. It's not like they're a small platform. Um, but there is definitely a peak, right? You can only grow so much. And granted, Facebook is making tons of revenue. I don't honestly think they're going to go bust. Um, I could be, see them becoming less significant and uh, over time, just because not as many people love the platform and it's just kind of turned into a cesspool. They need to do kind of what Twitter's doing, where they need to just start cleaning up the service of all the crap and multi-level marketing and all the other junk that's on there. So um, I, I don't personally think it's going to go bust in a big way. And the last question comes from uh, Maktuba. He says, is it true laptops with touchscreen use more battery power than non-touch screens? So yes. I believe it is true, but it is a marginal amount um, because you're adding a digitizer into the the mix, which is how you know your your finger is being received on the device. Um, it, I don't, th me personally, I don't think I'd buy a laptop without a touch screen. Um, I know that seems kind of backwards. I don't, and I don't use it all the time. But when you need it, it's nice. It, it's nice to have. It's it's kind of like um, I, like cooled seats in your car. Right. I'm not even talking about heated seats. Not everybody likes cooled seats, but when you need it on that hot summer day, it's just really nice to have. And so I don't know. I wouldn't go out of my way to avoid buying a laptop with a touchscreen out of fear of battery life. There are so many other things that are going to impact your battery life worse than a digitizer in the snack required for um, touch input such as your browser, such as the apps you're running, such as your screen brightness and all that other good stuff. So if that is your big concern, um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And uh, one other thing here, I get asked probably every week what screensaver this is behind me. And this is kind of funny. This is the Apple TV OS screensaver. Somebody ripped the Apple TV screensaver and it updates. As you guys have noticed, it, it changes. I don't know how they did this, but they ripped the screensaver from Apple. And so I, you can just go download it. And I downloaded it on here and it just runs in the background of the podcast. And there you go. And then somebody asked what this is right here. Uh, that is a Logitech C920. That is what I use for the First Ring Daily podcast that I do at this desk back here. There you go. 
Um, and so, guys, this has been a quicker episode. Hopefully, some of that Scarlet stuff is good. Uh, for those that are new to the channel, which uh, quite a few of you lately, appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is something I do roughly every Friday, and it's just kind of a quick recap of what's going on in the Microsoft world, tech world in general, and uh, it's not meant to be drag on. So with that, folks, have yourselves a wonderful weekend, and I'll catch you right back here next time.